Hi, everyone. This is Mary Elliott with uh, Bees Knees Podcast. And today we have a very interesting guest who, boy, oh boy, she's going to enlighten you in many ways because she's an actual orthopedic surgeon. Her name is Dr. Meredith Heisey. Uh, Dr. Heisey, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, well, you already said I am an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I live and work in Lansing, Michigan, basically, and I'm in a private practice uh, group uh, that's all subspecialized in orthopedic surgery. So um, we do lots of uh, innovative and, and fun things to try to help our, our patients get better. And why did you choose orthopedics? I mean, what, what made you what was the draw there for you? <laughs> I, I think I'm one of those um, people who just knew uh, like from a very young age that I wanted to go into medicine. I think I've known since I was probably five years old that I wanted to be a doctor, which is probably not the, the normal pathway. Um, and then, you know, I am the child of two engineers. So it's kind of a natural progression in medicine of, Hey, we like to build things, make things, um, you know, reshape and reconfigure and put things back together. So it's just kind of a natural progression in medicine for me to go into orthopedics and it's fun. And we get to make people better for the most part, you know, and, and see good outcomes. And, and it's very rewarding in that way. Oh, I can imagine, right? Because what you deal with the majority of the time is fixable, right? There's an actual solution that they can actually regain their freedom back. I mean, how, you know, physical freedom back, that is such a gift. I can only imagine how, how honestly rewarding that is. It is rewarding. Um, and it's, I mean, there are times where we, we can't get people, you know, back to exactly where they want to be, but just to make them feel more comfortable or to give them a little bit of, like you said, freedom. I mean, we all want to be able to, to be independent as we grow older and not only be, you know, a young athlete and be able to get back to, to sports, but also just to be able to walk with our kids or, you know, stay, stay upright and not to be um, debilitated in some way that, that we need others to, to constantly have to take care of us. Right. We want to stay independent and healthy. And it's so important that our physical health um, and our musculoskeletal system stays healthy. You know, sometimes people come in, they're in pain or they're, they're frustrated or they're depressed, right. Just because of their physical ailment or their physical limitations. And sometimes when you give them back, sometimes you see a whole nother side of them. And I, it always amazes me. I'm like, was that person there the whole time? And they just couldn't come out because they were just so, uh, so painful, uncomfortable that they couldn't get past that. That just affected everything in their life because of that, that, that discomfort or pain, whether it was pain or, or limited function, you know? So it's so, it's so great to be able to offer people some help, whether it's, um, surgical or not, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't require a surgery. Um, so it's, it's just, it's very rewarding for me to see people get better. So I have had, um, knee problems for many, many years. I had lots of injuries on, on one side and this was my, my good side. And, um, I have gone through lots of different treatments from scopes to shots to, um, home exercise and supplements and medication over the counter medications and all, all the things you're supposed to do. Um, and it finally got to the point where I just couldn't even like to stand and operate all day or to like take a walk with my kids was just miserable. I, I, I couldn't do it. So I really found myself not being able to participate in, in just normal day stuff, not, not even high level activities. So, um, as, as a surgeon, it's, it's, we never want to be the patient. <laughs> um, even though we really love operating and we know that we can do a good job for patients and, and get them functional again, it's just, it's a little bit of a humbling experience for us. Um, and probably is for many people because you have to give over control to somebody else to, to take care of you. And, um, so, but it finally got to the point where I, I was like, enough is enough. I can't, I can't do the things I want to do. I can't even go just walk down the boardwalk at, at the beach with my friends, you know? So I don't want to be the, the, um, and I'm not horribly old. Right. So I'm like, I can't do this and not, and not have any quality of life for, for however many more years until I'm the right age. Right. So I decided to move forward with getting a knee replacement. And, um, that was four weeks ago. 
um, and I had a wonderful experience. And, um, you know, in four weeks time, I am doing some exercise. I can walk without a cane. I have gone back to work part-time. Um, and, and it's just, it has lifted a bit of a burden off my shoulders, really an emotional burden where I'm like, Oh my gosh, am I, what's tomorrow going to feel like, am I going to be able to make it through my work week and not just, you know, collapse when I get home because things are painful and I'm tired and, and exhausted from that. So, so far it's been, it's been fantastic. There's a lot of very, very well-qualified, well-trained physicians and surgeons out there. They're, it's sometimes difficult to figure out how to find them, right? So we really rely on word of mouth. Now I have the added benefit of, I work with them. So I there's so many wonderful um, joint replacement surgeons in my practice. Um, so I'm not gonna go into too much why I chose. I could have, any one of them would do an absolutely wonderful job. Um, and I would have an absolutely excellent outcome. So um, because they are so well-trained and that is what they do. That's their subspecialty is to do total knees, total hips. And, and they have a very um, strong like pre-op protocol and post-op protocol of like, this is what you're going to do. This is the um, supplements and the pre-operative um, things to do to help prevent infection. And then this is what your post-op is going to look like. You're going to have therapy or exercise or in-home therapy or outpatient therapy. So there's lots of different options and it needs to be, you know, and sometimes those options are different for different types of people, right? So if we have an elderly person, they may not be doing as intense outpatient therapy all the time um, versus somebody who's younger, who may want to get back to sports or work. Right. So um, I think find also finding the right personality of a surgeon that you, um, I mean, you don't have to be best friends, but you have to be able to feel comfortable with that person. Um, and so I tell patients, you know, if you don't feel like you're comfortable with me, then you're not probably not going to have the outcome that we both want you to have. And that's okay to see somebody else. So I think that that, that comfort level with your surgeon is really important where you feel like you can talk to them. Okay. The other thing for me, and I had some experience with it before when I was practicing and doing joint replacement was the X10. And um, that is, I am a very big proponent of, of patients needing to do the work afterwards, right? You need to do the therapy. You need to do the exercise. You are an active participant in your healing and in your recovery, not just the exercises, but your nutrition and your mindset and all of those things. So for me, the X10 and for lots of patients were, was, was perfect. It's an in-home device, right? And it, it helps you do, do exercises in a graduated way three times a day. Like you can't get physical therapy three times a day. One, it would be outrageous <laughs> and it would be a lot of you to have to drive there and go there and do that. So, um, I, it has, I, I, it has, I feel like sped up my recovery so much in the early part of just getting my range of motion back and then being able to start working on some light strength, uh, exercises and those sorts of things. I, it's just, it's just been so remarkable in my recovery. So I used to recommend it to patients and now I just feel like I, I want to use it across the board on a lot of other things, um, on a lot of other patients and procedures, because it's just been such a great experience for me. And, and it's not just, Hey, we dropped off this machine. Here are the things that you're supposed to do. You have a personal coach that coach checks in with you at the beginning, like probably every day or every other day, here's what you're supposed to be doing. Let me help you guide you. This is, if something's not working, I'm here for you. And then here are some goals. This is what you're going to be doing next week. You know, and I just found that to be so helpful, even from a person who kind of knows what they're supposed to be doing. Right. So I, I just thought it was really nice, not only to, to have that guidance, but also to have that little bit of moral support, like, yep, you're doing great. Or, Hey, we need to work on this a little bit. You know, you might be a little bit behind, but maybe today's a bad day for you. Let's try it tomorrow. And I just found that so, um, so invaluable, you know, to have that person there that's helping guide you. I can put the best thing in the world in front of you to help you heal. But if you're not confident in it, right. And you're not seeing positive results. 
oh God, you know, you're already weak because you're, you're not feeling well and you're trying to recover and you're in pain. Mm-hmm. And if you do not see progress and if whatever you're doing, right, doesn't fill you with confidence and, and inspire you, oh God, you're going to have a really tough road ahead of you. It's hard sometimes in this day and age of healthcare where it's do more, see more, go, go, go. Um, you know, we're human and we have day, bad days and we have things that frustrate us. And sometimes it's like, okay, we got to refocus that, that we're, we're here to help you. And, and sometimes patients don't always feel that from you. You know, sometimes they feel like, Hey, you rushed, you rushed me. Um, and it's just, it's hard sometimes that, that we're trying to help so many people and as the time that we have available to us. So I try to always remember, okay, if I was the patient, what, do, what do they need? You know, what is it? Why are they here today? And what can I do to either educate or help or just listen? And sometimes they're just, they just need us to listen. So um, the thing you said about the caregiving is really an interesting thing for me. I have lots of patients who are probably a lot like me. They, we have lots of people who do not ask for help very well. They are used to being the caregiver and for them to have to have somebody care for them is sometimes um, take some grace, right? And so I would say, look, don't you feel rewarded when you're caring for somebody else? Allow somebody else to feel that and care for you. They would have been waiting for their turn to help you and give back. So I try to remember that when I'm the patient that, okay, it's okay for other people to help me. And um, at some point, you know, as we get through that recovery, it's going to help. But on the X10, you, it, your goal might be one degree that day, you know, one degree, which in therapy. And again, I am a big proponent of physical therapy and home exercise and that the whole healing and recovery process and just taking care of ourselves on a day-to-day basis, but on there one degree. Now that's really difficult to measure in a, like in a live setting. Like if I had my little measuring thing and I tried to measure one degree, that that's almost impossible. So I am a very goal oriented person. So when I saw, Oh, I made one degree on this, on this um, round today, on this set of exercises, my goal is to go one more degree later today. Or if I just stay the same, that's okay. Maybe that's where I need to be today. And, and maybe tomorrow morning I go one more degree or two more degrees. And that, that just helps you like, Hey, I see actual results and that helps you propel yourself forward for like, okay, ugh, I'm tired, but you know what? Last time I was on there, I felt better afterwards. I felt less stiff and I felt more confident getting up and moving around. So I'm going to get on there. And then when you get on there, you're like, Hey, I got another degree. So, you know, it's, it's just a reaffirming, uh, that you're doing the right, the right thing and that you're making progress. Cause it's frustrating when you feel like you've stopped making progress and you sort of kind of makes you want to stop, right. You don't want to be like, Oh, I'm nothing's happening. I'm not getting any better. I don't want to, why am I putting forth the effort? So when you see that positive result, it helps push you forward. Sure. I think in, in this day and age where we all wear watches to count our steps and all that, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. We're measuring everything, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> With, you know, today's technology is just the world we live in and it just enforces that behavior in us and we want to see results. Sometimes these things that we think are like, oh, why me? Why do I have to go through this? These are our, our moments of um, opportunity for growth. And to, uh, when you get on that other side, you're like, I did something that was hard and I know that I can do other hard things. And, uh, I think that's good. And I'm glad that my kids actually got to see that. Right. So, you know, most people are a little older when they have their knees replaced or joints replaced. So it's nice for them to see, okay, she went through something and she comes out on the other side and everything's okay. Yeah. Right. How beautiful, you know, for years, right. We would say, wait until you're. 55 or 60 years old to get a knee replacement. Um, and we had very good data, you know, long-term data that knees and hips last at least 15 years. And when we say it's something lasts 15 years, that means like 90 plus percent of people still have their implants, right? So it's not like at 15 years, it's like, okay, it's done. You need a new one. Um, that's just sort of the data we have, right? So now that data is probably keeps moving farther and farther because the technology gets better. The implants get better. Our techniques get better, but when that happens, we also start doing more surgeries on younger and younger patients. So what happens with those younger patients? 
Um, so we, we encourage that people do all of the non-operative and all the other things that they can do and wait until you really need it, right? You don't want to do it if you don't need it, because if you don't really have an, a, this, the, the symptoms, like if it's not really affecting your life and you have it done, you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to be like, oh, I, I notice a big change because we, if you're, if you're like, I have some pain, but it's here and there, then you probably should be able to continue to manage those symptoms with other, other means, right? Um, but we are starting to see that envelope push down a little bit into patients who are 50. Certainly. I think for a lot of people, that's still their cutoff. Um, and then sometimes a little bit younger patients who have really severe arthritis. Um, and then our, just our, our techniques and technology are getting better and better and better and better. Now I do a lot of shoulder replacement surgery, and I would say the same thing in that category as well is that that was a surgery. People said, no, don't have it done. They, they, people do not do well. They do great. They do fantastic. We are, and every year, I mean, the, the, the changes in the technology, not just the implants, but our, our medications and techniques and things like that allow patients to feel better faster, um, get stronger faster. And then as we get more and more data, we can say, okay, you know what? Young patients do well. These are th- maybe the things that they shouldn't do to help preserve the life of their joint, the longevity of their joint. Um, but yeah, it's safe for you. Now, do we recommend patients in the early forties and thirties to get any replacements? Absolutely not. Right. We, that's just, that's so young. And we know, and I know at my age that a revision or a second surgery may be in order for me at some point, but now we think, should you not enjoy your life for five, 10, 15 years and wait until you're 60 when you're going to be less active and then wish that you, you know, kind of give away your, your physical health, maybe your mental health, maybe your emotional health. Instead, maybe we should be doing some of these replacements for the right patients at a younger age. So they're able to be active, not only in, in your recreational activities, but your job, you know, we want people to be active members of society and be able to do those things. And sometimes patients have that um, hesitation to come in because they think the only thing we're going to offer is surgery. And, and some people haven't had really that much non-surgical care or, not, or what we call conservative you know, treatment. So the, sometimes there's other options available to you besides just surgery. So it's always good to come in and get an opinion. And sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to just waste your time. And if I'm, I don't want surgery and it's like, and sometimes, um, Sometimes that really is the best option, but sometimes there's some other things where we can do and, or just some people just want to come in for education. And I think that's absolutely great. And then when they feel like they're ready, they're like, okay, now I have some of the information I need to make this decision. And maybe that decision is a year or two years or five years um, before they're ready, but they kind of have already have that, that knowledge, that tool, that um, ammunition to like, okay, now I know what I'm getting into and I'll know when I'm ready, right? Like there was a day where I was like, I'm ready. I don't know what I'm waiting for now. (laughs) So I already, you know, and it's like, okay, now is the time. What was the trigger? The trigger was, you know, I, my health and function were deteriorating to the point where I couldn't just walk for a half a mile without having to sit and then not be able to, to enjoy the next day. So everybody has that that limit. Sometimes you don't know what that limit is until, until you reach it. And then you're like, okay, this is the time, but it is okay to either meet with your family doctor, your friends who've had surgery or have had problems who haven't had surgery and kind of educate yourself and get, get that information. I always say, be a little wary about about what you read on the internet. Um, but that's, that's part of what we do is, is educate. And some, and that's also the other good reason that we have physician extenders, right? So there's so many people out there. We can't see everybody. Um, so we, all of the physicians in our office have a, P, a physician assistant. Um, and w- I always like people to understand like sh- that person is part of my team to try to open more access to healthcare for you and more options for you. If my physician assistant feels like, okay, you need to see the, the, the surgeon, then you're going to get to see the surgeon. Sometimes they see the, see me, sometimes they see her. It just, you know, we are a team and we work together and that allows us to take care of more people. So, but they're great at that initial appointment, right? Educating, here are the options. Here's what you have. This is the, some of your choices. And I think just educating ourselves and knowing what's out there and what's available is really helps you 
with that next step of like, what should I do? Should I go forward with surgery? Should I not? And then those next steps after that can, is, um, it's a lot of education, you know, for any type of surgery. So, so I always want to encourage people to, to come in if you've got questions or you don't know what, what's happening. If you think you have arthritis, or if you think you have something else come in and let us evaluate you and give you some of those choices and just let you know, okay, this is what's happening. And this is what you can expect. If you're having a surgery, take some time prior to your surgery, get prepared, eat well, right? Nourish your body. Find, make sure you have that support system around you. If you need to take some time and make sure you have that emotional support around you. Okay. Like just make sure that you're in a good headspace, right? that you have positive um, thoughts and that you're going to recover and that you're going to do well. There are actually scientific studies that show that patients who can envision themselves healing and recovering actually do much better than patients who are like, I'm never going to get better. So having that positive um, mindset is really important ahead of time. Like I'm going to do well. There are people here that are going to help me. My doctor is on my, on my side is on my team. And if I have a problem, I know that I can reach out to them and they're going to be, you know, be responsive. And if I don't get a response, I'm going to reach out again. Right. So, um, I think those things are all important. And then, and then just taking the time to recover your body needs time to heal. I always say surgery is kind of like a trauma. It's like maybe like a mini car accident happened on your leg, right? So your body took a toll. It needs time to heal. So sometimes we don't give ourselves enough time and space and energy to say, okay, I need, I need more rest. I need to eat better. I need to do my exercises. I just need more time to heal. And sometimes we have patients that are like, I need to go back to work the next day. Um, you're not going to do well because your body can't recover that quickly. You do need that time. So I think that's important and realizing that you are an active participant in your recovery. So if you are not ready and willing to put in the time and effort that it takes, whatever that is, maybe it is rest. Maybe it's doing exercises. Maybe it's getting on your X10 three times a day to do the exercises. Then that's what you need to do. So you have to remember that you're part of the, I mean, you're the central part of your recovery. So we in healthcare can do a lot, but we, we need to all be on that same team. So the patient needs to be on the same team with us to get better. Um, and the other thing I just want to say, which has nothing to do with recovering, but I think is great is, um, I, uh, it's great to start seeing more and more women go into orthopedics. Um, and, and that's nothing against my male partners. I think they're all fantastic, but it is nice to start seeing some more women in orthopedics. And, um, I think they bring a different, um, point of view. Um, and they're all very capable of, of doing the same job. So, um, it's a, we're living in a, in a pretty crazy, but very exciting day and age where we get to, to see some of this change happening. Well, it's a beautiful change. Right? Yeah. It's really changing. And I, um, it's amazing. I, um, uh, uh, maybe I have always tried to encourage, um, young women, whether they be in high school or college or just not sure what they want to do. Contact me. You want to come in and job shadow for half a day in the office or for a couple of hours in the office. If you have an interest in medicine, don't be dissuaded from doing things that seem like, oh, that's too hard, or I can't have the work-life balance. I can't have a family and do and be a surgeon. Those are those are false, <laughs> false <laughs> advertising. Okay, you can do those things, and you know, there's nothing that's ever perfectly in balance, right? We sometimes we work a lot, and then other times we have lots of time for our families. So that that balance is something that we have to find, and it's not all the time. So. Um, you know, kind of like we were talking about before, we're able to do really hard things. So don't, I, you know, I always try to encourage my kids like, yeah, that's going to be hard, but you can do it. And when you get done doing that hard thing, you're going to feel so accomplished and so proud of yourself that you challenged yourself to do something that scared you and find out that you did it. So. Yeah. Incredible. Honestly, I think the world of you, <laughs> I really do. Oh, I, thank you. <laughs> I, honestly, I think uh, you're in the right place doing the right thing and people are very blessed, right. To have you take care of them, honestly. And I'm not just saying that <laughs> everyone. I'm not just saying that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty genuine. Because girl. <laughs> I found something <laughs> I am blessed because I find something that, um, you know, fills my bucket. I mean, are there times where I'm like, yeah. oh, oh gosh, I need a break. I have had enough. I am exhausted. I can't take on any more. 
And then you get that pressure relief and it's like, oh, no, I do love my job. Okay. I can get up tomorrow and I'd be, be re- reinvigorated to go back. And honestly being off for a few weeks, I'm like, oh, okay, I got to go back. I'm, back. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm happy to be back here. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking for it. I'm not quite back full time, but next week um, I'll be back doing surgery. So it'll be good. Well, love the smile. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can tell you're at peace, right? You're yeah. happy with uh, the way everything went. And I'm so glad, uh, you know, you, we got to experience this journey together. Yeah. <laughs> How beautiful is that? Right. Fantastic. Um, right. All right. Well, thank you. I am sure everyone out there is so going to appreciate this. You're going to motivate and inspire many people and, and bring them more peace too about this. I'm pretty darn sure about that. Okay. Well, thank you for having me and allowing me to, uh, to share this with you. 